Hi everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about everything we picked up in Japan. We're gonna do a little Japan haul of everything we got. Just a disclaimer though, I just wanna let you guys know that when me and Donnie travel, we don't typically buy a lot of things. Usually it's like a few trinkets here and there, a couple souvenirs. Sometimes we like to look at textiles. We like to bring home to support their economy, but also to take a little bit of that country back home with us. Usually that's kind of our vibe when it comes to shopping, but typically we don't really go shopping. But with that said, Japan hits just a little bit differently. As a lot of you guys probably know, Japan, a lot of the areas for shopping there is duty-free, meaning it's tax-free for tourists. Also, aside from that, when we are calculating things and kind of comparing prices, typically things there were a lot cheaper than they were if you were to buy at the States. And so we kind of wanted to capitalize on that as well. And then on top of that, the dollar is really strong against the yen right now. And so everything we got saved us quite a lot of money if we were to buy it in the States. So some of this stuff is vintage finds, thrift finds. Some of this is we went to the store to buy it new because it would be a lot cheaper there than if we were to buy it in the States. So just wanted to throw that out there. I don't want you guys thinking that every time we go traveling, we buy a bunch of stuff because no, we... We don't typically go shopping when we travel, but you know, like I said, Japan just hits different. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. And we're gonna start with these big pieces right here so I can kind of get them out of the way. We've been wanting quality luxury roller carry-ons for the longest time, but we just never invested in it. So we ended up saving about three to 400 on each of these luggages. Picked up a couple of these Removas, and I don't know if you guys knew this, but it's spelled Remoa, but they pronounce it in Germany Remova. So a lot of people say Remoa, but it's actually Remova. But we picked up this. Uh, this one is mine and it is the Cabin Classic. And then Donnie picked up the Cabin, I'm sorry, mine was the Cabin Original. This one is the Cabin Classic. I actually liked both styles equally, but Donnie preferred this one and so I let him choose this one. And the reason why this one is the Classic is because it has these classic details of this leather, black leather here, as well as here and the handles. I feel like it looks a little bit more rugged as well and a little bit more manly, to be honest. And the latches here are those old school style clasps, are they called clasps? <laughs> that you would see in like older luggages. Like you go like this, see that? But yeah, this one is cool. We also added some stickers just to add a little bit more fun to this. And then here is mine, which is the original. And it's a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more modern, all silver and the clasps are a little bit more modern and up to date. Here, let me show you how they open. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but that's sort of how it opens. No. There you go. That's how that looks there. Now you know my code. If you ever see my luggage, don't steal it. And one of the, the main reasons why we went with Remova is because they have a lifetime guarantee on their luggage now. So if anything happens to the wheels, they'll cover it, the handles, and also the uh, trolley handle. These are notorious for getting dented, which is just part of owning an aluminum piece. It's They're gonna get dented, they're gonna get scratched, and I think that shows character. But yeah, we're really happy with these guys. I actually love the stickers too. We wanna get more stickers. Before we move on, I do know that a lot of people get flack for Removas because they're like, why are you spending so much on a carry-on? And to which I say, because we want to, it makes us happy, and we've been wanting this for a very long time, and we waited for a perfect opportunity to buy them, and so we went for it. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you guys is probably my favorite thing I purchased in Japan. Not probably, it is my favorite thing I purchased in Japan. And it is this, Haori, Haori, Haori. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's H-A-O-R-I, Haori. And it is a traditional men's garment. And it's also meant to wear over a kimono, but the lady who sold it to me, I was asking her a little bit about it and she said, these days you can wear it like really modern and you can wear it as like a summer kimono, summer garment. You can wear it over casual clothes. And she was like, yeah, there's no real disrespectful way to wear it. But yeah, I just love this. The silk is beautiful and I actually bought it secondhand at a shop in Kyoto. Unfortunately, I wasn't really recording and I forgot the name of the shop, but it's in the Gion district, really close to that Starbucks in Kyoto around the corner. 
and it's two stories. That's about all I can tell you right now of where I found it, but they had a rack full of these and this one stood out to me the most. I grabbed it immediately. It ended up being, I think, a hundred something US dollars. The reason being is that the silk was just so much more smooth than the other garments that were on there. And also this beautiful artwork inside. Like, look at that beautiful detail. I was asking why it was on the inside. Back in the day, it was kind of frowned upon to flaunt your wealth or maybe people weren't comfortable flaunting their wealth. And so what they would do is they would put these beautiful artworks inside their jackets. And so for them, they knew it was in there. For them, they could appreciate it without having to show it and be flashy out in public. I don't know, I, th I just thought that was really cool. I am going to rock the heck out of this thing. In that same secondhand store, we picked up a couple pieces of artwork, which I think are so freaking cute. I think this was like two bucks each, which is insane. Such a good deal on this artwork. And across from the shop, it was closed, but we saw this really cool artwork we wanted to get for our shelves. Unfortunately, it was closed and so we couldn't go in. But the next day, my sister-in-law had gone and we asked her to check on it for us. Unfortunately, it was paper or like really thin material and they didn't have anything to wrap it. And so it might have gotten creased if we traveled. And so we told her, okay, no, don't buy it. But she ended up getting us a postcard from there of the actual artwork we were looking at. I don't know, I thought that was so cool, but they got us a little postcard. It was so sweet. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Grayson. Thank you, Max. This was super cool to, to come home to and find in our mailbox. One of the things Donnie picked up is this Gundam model. It's plastic, but it was actually really cheap. I forget how much it cost, but we just love how it looks on our shelves. It's a nice addition to Donnie's collection of figurines and models. So he picked this guy up. Very cool. I picked this up. This tote bag from Patagonia over at 2nd Street, which is one of their largest secondhand stores in Japan. I believe they have over 800 of them throughout the country. Also, I'm not going in any particular order. I'm just like looking around here and grabbing whatever I think I want to talk about next. So and there's no rhyme or reason why I'm talking about these things. So just want to point that out. This is like a huge everyday tote. It is massive. Look how big this thing is. I think there's Narnia in here somewhere, but I loved it because I feel like this would be a perfect beach bag, picnic bag, grocery store bag, just throw everything in here. Next thing I picked up was this accessory, also from 2nd Street. It is from a company called Be Together. It's a utilitarian accessory that can be used any which way. You can use it crossbody like this, put your keys on here. You can also get the insert for your phone so that your phone can attach to this. You can wear it crossbody, you can wear it like that, but wearing it as a necklace. So I was immediately drawn to this because my ex-boyfriend, he lived in Japan and he just loved Japanese fashion accessories and he always had the coolest accessories and this reminded me of that and so I picked this up. I just think it's really cool. I'm not sure how I'm gonna utilize or wear this yet, but I just knew I had to pick it up because you don't typically find these things in the States. All right, next thing is we got these two magnets at Donkey. And I don't know, I just thought these were cute. <laughs> and then we picked this up too at a local store in Kyoto and you actually could put essential oils on top there just for a little aroma. Another little artwork we picked up, which is not really artwork, it was more a postcard, is this of Mount Fuji. It's meant to be a postcard and it's like a wooden postcard, but they also sold little stands for it. So we figured we can just use this as a little artwork for a little uh, souvenir for us. We bought this at the Art Aquarium Museum in Tokyo. Another thrift find is this, and it is a wallet by Maison Margiela. And I was like so surprised when I found this because I have been eyeing these and these guys retail for, I want to say $400 here in the States. And this one came packaged in really great condition. It also came with the original cards. I picked this up for about $70 US. And I just liked it because it's a little bit more understated. Quality of the leather feels so good. It still smells brand new. Oh, it smells like new leather. And I just love the color, you know me. Stamping detail. Such good condition. Here are a couple more figurines that Donnie bought. I'm only showing you guys a few of the things he bought because I will give you a little glimpse of all the figurines and model toys that he bought because he had the time of his life looking for stuff like this. These ones I thought were really cool and it's from, I believe it's called My Hero Academia. I don't really watch anime, but I'm gonna try to start watching it because I don't know, a lot of people tell me good things about anime. So I thought these were awesome. These were also secondhand and he bought these 
these at an area called Akihabara in Tokyo, an area where they sell a lot of like computer electronics, but also a lot of anime, figurines, toys, models, robots, all that fun stuff. So yeah, if you guys are into that, I really recommend checking out Akihabara. All right, next thing I picked up, which was actually the first thing I picked up, was from this, I'm not really sure how to pronounce this. I want to say Ariale Matigo, and it's a limited collection by Nenufar. I'm probably butchering that, but here is the tag. They also have a website, but I don't think they ship to the US, which is unfortunate because their stuff looks really freaking cool. But I found this when we were shopping at a mall called Parco over in Osaka and found a secondhand shop that was just like literally in the corner. But they had this collection there and this is not secondhand. I just thought it was so freaking cool. But it looks like the back is, could also be the front and the back has this gorgeous artwork. Let's see how the collar looks like. This could be the front as well. So I don't know if it's meant to be worn both ways or I don't know if this is actually the front and you button the back. You know what, now that I'm actually looking at this, because the tag is back here, maybe this is the front. So maybe you just need Donnie to button me up from the back, you know what I mean? <laughs> But I love this. This is such high quality. I can't wait to wear it for the fall or for a special event. Okay, this is probably my second favorite thing I bought in Japan. I have to say too that the lady that I bought that from, she was so kind, so nice, so helpful. She was so appreciative of me buying it and so I felt really good about buying from her and supporting her business. She was just so thankful. So Japanese people are pretty awesome. Next up, we're gonna go over quickly what we got at Shimo Kitizawa, which is a district over in Tokyo that is known for vintage and thrift shopping. I loved that area. That was probably my favorite area and I can't wait to go back and spend a whole day there. I wanted to try more things on but it was really hot and trying clothes on in 90 degree weather when you've been walking around it's just not really the funnest thing and so I just picked these things up and I knew they would fit because I didn't really want to try them on. I, I felt like I had a good grasp on how they would fit. Got home, washed them, they fit perfectly and so I'm excited about that. The first thing is from a store called Ragla Magla which ended up being one of my favorite stores there. It is more on the pricier side and I just wasn't really committed to trying things on and if I was going to spend a lot there I did want to try it on prior to purchasing but I did find this and it's a vintage coach bag but I just love the slim line of this. It looks so thin that you wouldn't think would fit a lot but it actually fits quite a few things in here. I could put my wallet, I could put an action camera in here, there's a little pocket here for your keys and other miscellaneous things and the leather on this feels so so buttery, soft, and smooth. You know they don't make leather bags like this anymore. And the color is just, that's me. That's me right there, you know what I mean? So yeah, really love this fine. Again, this was from Aragla Magla over in Shimokitizawa. This next shirt I found was from a store called Flamingo. And Aragla Magla and Flamingo are the only stores that I remember going into. I picked this up because I loved it. Cropped, oversized, but you can layer it on top of another shirt or another piece. And it just looked cool. And I actually got it off their mannequin. And so I liked the way they styled it. I typically wouldn't pick something up like this because I wouldn't know what to do with it. But because I saw it on the display, I was like, oh, I can rock that. I also like how the buttons are just really heavy duty. This was the first thing I picked up when we went to Shimokitizawa. It was almost like an impulse buy. It was like the third store I went into and hadn't bought anything. So I just was like, let's just get something. Let's get it going. So I picked this up. It's from Gap. It's a basic kind of flannel. These next two shirts I'm going to show you, these were pretty much all over Shimokitizawa, this sort of style of button-ups. I feel like they're like the dad button-ups from random old school brands that you don't really know of or hear about. You, I don't know if it's showing on camera, but there is some texture detailing to this. So that's why I liked it. This one, another dad vibes going on here. This one was at 2nd Street. I picked this up for Donnie. I didn't really shop for Donnie because I was shopping for myself, but I did see this and I was like, oh, he would look cool in this. So I picked this up and this is an Oakley tee, but I did like this cool pocket right here. It's very unique to me, different style. And then my favorite thing I got there. This is my favorite. I don't know if this, that see-through shirt or the coach bag was the favorite thing that I bought at Shimokitizawa, but it could be this too because these are some chinos from Polo Ralph Lauren. And I actually did not try this on, so it was a gamble. A lot of pants are always so freaking long. I'm glad I picked these up because these are perfect and they're so comfortable. They're lightweight and they just fit perfectly. This is like probably one of the most perfect pants that fit me that I've ever purchased. So glad I picked these up. It is missing a button here, so I'll eventually want to find a similar button to add on to that. All right, let's just wrap up the clothing because we did go to a huge 
Uniqlo store. I want to say it was eight or nine stories. It was ginormous and we just kind of popped in and so we didn't have a lot of time there. Definitely wanted to grab something from Uniqlo and I just got this simple tee. I thought that graphic was cute and I like the cut of this. I feel like it'll fit me well. I did try this on and this fit me perfectly and it is just a light jacket. It almost feels like a trench coat, but it's not long like a trench coat. It's also a little bit thicker than a windbreaker, kind of like an in-between windbreaker trench. I feel like this will be perfect for those colder San Diego days. I wish I could have shopped there more because I feel like their pants, again, like the one I was talking about, fit perfectly for me. So I picked up these pants and they're just like a classic pant. It kind of reminded me of Dickies, super affordable. I can't remember the price on this, but Uniqlo is affordable. But I love the baggy fit on this, the wide leg. So because we were staying at Hotel Gracery in our first part of our Tokyo trip, Hotel Gracery has this big Godzilla on top of the roof or like not on top, but like in the middle of their hotel. And we knew we wanted to bring Godzilla home with us. So Donnie found this guy at a secondhand shop. I'm like, oh my god, it's so cute. And then he also got this little Godzilla pack of toys. Show you guys one in here. Here's that guy. <laughs> Here's another Godzilla. I was really excited when I saw this because prior to going to Japan, we actually went to the Gucci store to check this out. I didn't know what the price was because I really didn't look it up. I just saw used ones on Grailed and I just wanted to go to the store to check it out just to see how it actually fit. But I was so surprised. It was $1,200. I'm like, this bag is not worth $1,200. No way, no how. And so when I saw this at Donkey, I was like, Oh yeah, that's happening. So I got this Gucci bag. It's a, a Gucci Horsebit 1955 mini bag. I just love the size of this. This is perfect for when I run errands and just wanna bring my phone and wallet. It goes easily inside here. And that's pretty much all that could fit in here is a phone and a wallet. It's not that big, but I guess that's a good thing when I wanna go out and run errands and just be light. But yeah, I just really love this bag. I thought it was like a, just a perfect size to have my collection of bags because most of my bags are actually pretty big. And so I'm trying to incorporate smaller bags into my collection. So I'm so happy I found this at Donkey. I was like, ah! We're getting it because I'm not paying 1200. I think it was, I want to say it was like seven, 750. Pretty sure it was in that range because I was like so shocked at how much more affordable it was there. Yeah, glad we picked this up. Okay, I just have like a couple more things to share with you guys. And I know you might be thinking like, what did Donnie buy? <laughs> He's not really a shopper like me. He loves toys and stuff, but in terms of like fashion, he'll just pretty much borrow what I buy. And so a lot of this is also for him, not just for me. So, you know. Just wanted to put that disclaimer out, which by the way, this bag, he co-signed this purchase as well because he also liked it. This is the Louis Vuitton Atlantis GM bag and really caught my attention for some reason. And I call this the Supot bag. In Tagalog, Supot is like your grocery bag, like you put your groceries in there. And I just love that it's very versatile. It also comes with its own separate, I'm not sure what this is called. It comes with this, you can attach to it. And it also has a luggage tag on here. So it is meant for traveling, probably like a carry-on, but I'm using it as like an everyday bag. And you could put this here. But I took it off because I like it a little bit just more simple and streamlined. The thing about this bag is it's very versatile. You could wear it. Also comes with this little buckle, which is pretty cool. Part of their travel series too. But the thing is it comes with this strap here. So you could wear it over the shoulder. You could wear it crossbody. Or you can also take it out and cinch it so that these go like this and then it's cinched here and it almost becomes this little like different shape when you're holding it like that. But the guy was telling me on runway when they premiered this, they were holding it like a bag and they would just go like that and hold it like that. Really versatile in my opinion and I can't wait for this to soften up because I feel like that's when it will really shine. I did see this after I bought this at Donkey secondhand, but it was almost the same price. It was literally like $100 less, so I'm not too mad that I didn't get it used. Obviously, if I found it used first, I probably would have went that route and saved $100, but I was not in the market for a Louis bag. My mom was, you know, I just got bitten by the bug. Like mother, like son, and Donnie co-signed this. This is a bag he would want to use too, so this is basically for both of us. Also ended up saving about close to $500 buying it there over here, so. Then the last thing I want to show you guys is this 
Ooh, it's kind of heavy actually, this robot that Donnie bought. It's not Gundam. I'm actually not sure where it's from. Honestly, don't even know if he knows where it's from, but he just loved, he likes collecting robots, uh, model robots, model figurines. It's so high quality and, but this is gonna go perfect with the other robots he got going over there. And yeah, so he picked this up. And so if you're wondering how we brought all of this home with us, one, we packed our check-ins only halfway. So we had an extra half empty for both of our luggages. So we almost had one full check-in luggage. And then obviously we bought a Removas, which helped also take a lot of this back with us. So yeah. That's gonna be it for the haul. Like I said, we don't normally go shopping like this when we go traveling, but you know, we were there, YOLO. And also I do have to say thank you to my mom because if you guys are new here, basically we went to Japan for 12 days and it was for my mom's 80th birthday. And for all of the family to go, she basically bought our plane tickets so that you know everyone can go. That gave all of us a little bit extra spending money and so we were really thankful for that. So thank you, mom. Even though it was your birthday, <laughs> we bought ourselves a bunch of birthday gifts too. <laughs> so thank you, mom. Love you. Hope you had a good time. Obviously, we did. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed our little haul, our pickups from Japan. And I don't know if you could tell, but I'm like kind of obsessed with Japan right now and their fashion and their just culture. So yeah, anyways, thank you guys for watching. And if you can, try to choose happy over sad today and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, everyone.